Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to my double feature movie reviews for Concussion and Joy. Concussion stars Will Smith, Alec Baldwin, Gugu Apatha, and Albert Brooks. Concussion is based on a true story on Dr. Bennett, who has to uncover the truth about this concussion disease when these football players have brain damage that could take him into some very serious and treacherous places like committing suicide. And he's trying to find a way to stop that from happening. So when I went to Concussion, I was honestly very interested in this film because I love the talents behind this film and the subject matter. You know, it's something very serious and I think something we should be all aware of whether we watch football or not. And I gotta say, that's exactly what Concussion is. This is a very interesting and very engaging movie. And I even give the filmmakers credit for making this movie because I know the NFL did not react well to concussion being made. So it was a very ballsy move for this movie to be made. And I give the filmmakers props for that because you can tell that they really wanted to tell a true story. Will Smith as Bennett, he did a great job here. This is by far one of the best performances from Will Smith. Will Smith transforms into Dr. Bennett. There were times where I actually didn't see Will Smith on screen because he really does transform as this character that wants to uncover the very scary truth behind concussion. I thought he did a very great job in his role as well as pulling off a very convincing accent to the character which I know is something Will Smith doesn't do very often so it was kind of interesting to see him pull off an accent which personally to me I thought he did a very good job at doing. We also have Alec Baldwin who also does a really good job in the film. I thought his part was very interesting and him and Will Smith when they're together they make the movie even more interesting when the two of them interact with each other. You also have Albert Brooks, who I guess you could say is kind of the comic relief behind this film. Like he definitely adds some humor to the film, but he does take situations seriously when he needs to. And I thought Albert Brooks just did a very good job acting in this film. And I thought Gugu Apatha Ga, I always somehow get her name wrong. She did a very good job in this film as well. She's basically the woman that Dr. Bennett took in under his wing. And then, you know, later on, as you can expect, they, she becomes a love interest for Dr. Bennett. I thought it was nice that Dr. Bennett had a love interest because when you watch this movie, all this man is focused on is work and work and work. But you know, when she comes into his life, he has someone to hold and care for. And I thought how Concussion actually handled the plot between Will Smith and Gugu was handled very well. The cinematography looks really good in this film. It's very well lit, a lot of very nice shots. It's very well directed and it's a very well written movie with a script that's very well realized on this whole serious subject matter. And it really is just disturbing at times watching this movie because there were times where I was literally just very disturbed by this and I just couldn't believe it. Concussion is just one of those movies where I'm constantly interested from beginning to end. Although I will say there's times where the film can be a bit slow paced and it's not like I'm bored. I was never bored watching this film. It's just there were times where I could definitely feel the running time on this film because it's about two hours long. I do feel like even though I got enough of the whole concussion subject matter, I got enough information on it, I felt like the movie didn't go as deep as it wanted to, and I don't know if it's because the NFL has anything to interfere with this movie, but even though I got enough information, don't get me wrong, I felt like the movie didn't go deeper as it wanted to. You could tell it tried to go deeper, but it just kind of pulled away 
and certain moments from going more deeper into the subject matter. And I will say, even though Goo Goo Apatha had a very nice romantic plot with Will Smith, I do feel like the movie could have done a little more with her. I felt like she was just there to motivate Dr. Bennett to never give up, be the one to help keep him strong when Dr. Bennett is having like his doubts. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. I liked how the movie did that, actually. But I just wish they could have done a little more with Goo Goo. I understand it's a based on a true story story fell, but I felt like she could have had a little more ado rather than just being the motivator for Dr. Bennett, played by Will Smith. Overall, guys, I was really engaged watching Concussion from beginning to end. It's a very well-made movie, a very well-directed movie with a very solid script that's very well-realized. It has great performances from Will Smith, Alec Baldwin, Albert Brooks, and Gugu Apathaga. And it just has very beautiful cinematography and I think even if you're not a football fan it's a film I should say check out at least once because it's a good film to watch to keep you aware on this whole serious subject matter so because of that I'm going to give concussion three out of four stars now the film I'm going to be reviewing is joy Joy is written and directed by David O. Russell. It stars Jennifer Lawrence, Robert De Niro, and Bradley Cooper. Joy is about this character named Joy, obviously as the title states. She is a woman that has a very dysfunctional family. You know, she is pretty much on her own because her family is pretty messed up. She tries to create this mob to get a business out of it and pretty much just rising to the top in her family business. So I was really looking forward to Joy to be honest because David O. Russell's a very talented guy. I wasn't a fan of The Fighter, however. I loved Silver Lines Playbook and I didn't really care for American Hustle. So going to Joy, I was really interested in this movie, but I was also kind of worried because I didn't want it to be another David O. Russell miss. I was hoping this would kind of even out like with his hits and miss and luckily after seeing Joy, even though I am aware of the reviews it's getting, it's getting mixed to very negative reviews. This is a hit from David O. Russell and I do think Joy is the best film from David O. Russell since Silver Lines Playbook. The reason I love this movie so much is because Joy is actually a very strong female character. The character that Jennifer Lawrence plays is very independent. She has to do things on her own. She doesn't really get support from her family at all and despite her family pretty much bringing her down a lot, she doesn't give up and she manages to find a way to rise back up because that's what life is. You know, when you're gonna start something, it's not gonna start out well, and then you're gonna have all of these conflicts that happen, then you're gonna have troubles in your life. That's what life is, it's a roller coaster ride. You're gonna have your ups, you're gonna have your downs, and that's what Joy presented so well. Jennifer Lawrence, she is fantastic in Joy, and this is easily one of the best performances she has given in her career. She transforms as Joy. She was just plain terrific in this role. She made her role very captivating and very interesting to watch. The way she would just react to certain moments is just so believable. There's even times where you can just look at Joy's face and you can see how she's feeling. She doesn't have to say anything. You know how she's feeling just by looking at her face, the way she's reacting to certain things. Robert De Niro was also very good here as Joy's father, which is funny because he plays Bradley Cooper's father in Silver Lines Playbook, and now the role is switched in Joy. But you know, it's Robert De Niro. He pulls off another really good performance. His character as a father, yeah, he's not likable, but that's the point. You know, Joy is dealing with the family that's not very supportive. So it's the point of this movie to have unlikable characters. But yeah, I'm just saying his character as a father wasn't likable, but Robert De Niro pulled off being unlikable very well. Bradley Cooper, not in this film too long, however, 
but he still does a very good job for the part that he has. And really, that goes to everyone. Everyone in Joey's family, whether it be Joey's daughter or the grandma. The grandma, I thought, was terrific in this film. Joey's mother was really good. Pretty much all the performances were very well done, including Joy's ex-husband, who was now her friend. That was very interesting right there to see how despite that Edgar Ramirez went from being Joy's husband to her friend, you know, it was very interesting and I thought the film handled that very well. The cinematography is absolutely gorgeous to look at. The way he just films this movie is just so beautiful looking, you know, for the time setting that this movie is in. It is beautifully directed. Joy is just a very well crafted movie and I loved how David O. Russell wrote this movie. I was honestly very engaged throughout Joy and I wanted to see where this film was going to go with Joy because Joy is obviously the most likable character along with her best friend. I really liked her best friend and I really like Edgar Ramirez. But Joy is by far the most likable character. You feel bad for her whenever something bad does happen. And you just root for this character because you want her to succeed. You want Joy to follow her dreams. And you want her to prove to her unsupportive family wrong. The music choices in Joy were great as well. As I did feel like it fit very well for you know the time period that we're in with Joy. And it just fits that David O. Russell style. That's one thing about David O. Russell. So whether I may not care for his films like with The Fighter and American Hustle or love his films like with Civil Lines Playbook and now this one, he has a very interesting style that he brings to each of his films and the style he carries in Joy was honestly very fascinating. And as I stated, the movie does have a beautiful message about never giving up in life. No matter how hard things get, you just keep moving forward and you keep going for it because if you just give up, then what would be the whole point of you even starting? You know, just keep going no matter how hard things get and you're eventually gonna reach to the top. Now, my only problems with Joy is that the narration in this film, you know, particularly when it begins, it kind of felt pretty unnecessary. I don't think you really needed narration in this film. There's maybe one scene in this film where I thought the narration was very well done and it was during a pretty sad moment in the film. But, you know, all the other times I didn't feel like the movie really needed any kind of narration. There are a few weird imageries, weird sequences that happen in the first half of Joy. If you guys have seen this movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a few dream sequences, something like that. Did feel pretty out of place and I feel like they weren't needed. My next flaw is really more of a nitpick because that's the whole point of this movie. But yeah, it is hard to connect with most of the characters. You can't really get behind Robert De Niro or the mother. The mother especially. I think the mother is honestly the most unlikable character. A lot of the characters really weren't likable in this film and it's kind of hard to get behind them but I do understand that's the point of the film so I could kind of forgive that one. But my last flaw with Joy is that there's a few times where conflicts happen and then it's like by the next scene those conflicts seem to be resolved really fast. It happens a few times in the film where Joy is in a certain conflict and then boom by the next scene it's already resolved. Overall though guys, I love Joy. This film was great in my opinion. Definitely the best film since Silver Lines Playbook from David O. Russell. Since I wasn't a fan of The Fighter or American Hustle, Joy was really engaging and I'm going to give it three and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think of the films Concussion and Joy. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!